Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of chutzpah. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me sure. Hi, this is Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, and toon talker, and I'm here with... Um, that's him. And that's me. I'm Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Right. So no more um, Warner Brothers uh, bumpy and music. Um, let's get right to it, shall we? Yes. This is called the Great Movie Cartoon Parade. And it's really... Alice Ryder. Is yeah, that Alice and Bachelor? That's the one. And it's really a crash course in animation, so it's just poster book, basically. Yeah. So Bounty Books. Yes, by John Hallis and notes by David Ryder. It's a bounty book and it came out in 76. 1976. And who's that? That is uh, from Terry Toons. Uh, that's Alfalfa the uh, Farmer. That's right. We used to have a lot of trouble with... Um, with uh, Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah. Amongst other people. Yeah. And so this is just a crash. Was, by the way, just a footnote, I was going to grab the uh, Heckle and Jekyll... Um, uh, models which well, go I and have. get Heckle and Jekyll and I'll you know, All right, you go and Jekyll off and I'll yeah, you'll love it yes um, so this is the beginning of the book a bit of a crash course in history you know modern day um, Popeye and because Hallis directed this film Animal Farm which is pretty good still and of course now we go back to because it's, it's British this book this is about um, British artists and um, the birth of the comic strip and this is uh, Hogarth, he was a portrait artist really, um, and he did famous uh, um, stories, uh, narrative paintings of stories, satirical. And this is by James Gilray, one of the great, great, great cartoonists of all time. A lot of his work still stands up and he, he set a lot of the, um, the templates for modern cartooning. And of course, this is all before animation obviously, and this is German. This is um, Fritz and, um, what's his name? The beginning of the... Uh, Cats and Jammers? Yeah, but the, the, originally it was these boys. Yeah. Um, and then there's some very early animation, basic uh, animation. Emil Cole? Yeah, very, uh, very early. Yep. And here we are in the animation and there's, um, there's Mr. Fleischer um, with his ink. And this is uh, early... Um, um, Felix and how he used the fourth wall and his tail. So, yeah. so he would break off. Um, yeah. They'd have a like a question mark yeah. in the actual animation and itself, he just, just and he would it. use that to catch fish. Yeah, yeah. So that was like a. And these are just early, early trope wall. shapes that they use in different animation. Yeah, well, that's a Warner Brothers one. That's uh, yeah. Bosco. Yeah, and. Um, that's the rabbit. That's that's Walt. That's that's Andy. That's Walter Lance. Yeah, Walter Lance. Um, Andy Panda is Walter Lance. That's Walter yeah, yeah, Lance yeah, yeah. There. That's right. Yeah, that's Andy Panda. Yeah, yeah. And I think he was in Fleischer Cartoon. Oswald the Rabbit. Walt oh, Disney. 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 Okay. So they've got them all here. Yeah. And then you have um, Gandhi Goose. Yep. Dinky Duck. He didn't last long. Droopy. He didn't last long. I remember seeing his stuff. And this is uh, early. Um, you know, uh, extended um, cartoons. And then here's the features. This is this from... This is Howis and Bachelor's Animal Farm. Yeah. And this is... Um, Top Cat. Top Cat, TC. And Officer Dribble. Yes. Dibble. Sorry, yes. Dribble. Dibble. <laughs> and this is a bit of European animation here. Uh, you wouldn't get that sort of thing in America. Uh, you would in the uh, 50s, with yeah, Bashkin, with jazz yeah. oriented. And of course, jazz, then, uh, then it influence. finishes on on Fritz the Cat, which was the first X-rated cartoon. Yeah, because Ralph this, this Bakshi. Book, yeah, this book came out in... in uh, Thank you, 76. Ralph Bakshi. Look at that. Yes. Fantastic. So, and this book is alphabetical order, so here we go. Asterix. So animated Asterix would be feature films? Yes, of course. I don't think they did shorts, but they turned the cartoons into, into feature films with... Um, yeah. With G Gerard Depardieu, Depardieu playing his character. Yeah, beautiful. 
And Andy Pandy? Andy Panda. Oh, Andy Panda, okay. 1930s. Yes. So this was um, Walter Lance who went on to do the very zany... Um, Woody Woodpecker. Woody Woodpecker. Which I couldn't stand. Oh, I loved I him. I couldn't stand oh, him. I loved oh, him. I couldn't stand oh, him. Oh, I loved Woody Woodpecker. No, no. I loved him. Was yeah, 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 yeah. Couldn't stand him. But he was like um, Daffy Duck. Bonzo. Me. Now, this looks British. Looks British to me. I'm, I'm not much on the Bonzo, are you? Um, you can see the connection well, from comics. Well, this is by Study. So, I, yeah. the guy's name Study. So, there, these early. were... Um, yeah, comics. Well, yeah, but they're very animated yeah, comics. Yeah, that, that's why they use basically this Basically, create this cute character yeah. and have all these um, antics, be, you know, um, happen to him. So yeah. you get little jokes where he's sucking up his um, just keep, tail. Just keep the party the, clean, all right? In the um, vacuum cleaner and yeah. then his ear. Yeah. And then, you know, his parent, his mother says, go to the bathroom. You know, so yeah. hey, little, little Bonzo, you've had a hard day. Well, I mean, also, you do? also, you can't, you <clears throat> so, can't put all these like you, you cutesy know, cartoons. It's easier to get better repros from the actual uh, cartoon characters when they were in comics than yeah. the actual uh, thirty-five mil uh, films they were on. Out of the Inkwell, Betty yeah. Boop. Betty Boop, of course, became an icon on her own. Yes, the, very popular. The, the sort of flapper girl, because if you look at it, there's not many Betty Boop shots where Betty Boop's drawn profile it's all mainly you know front on headshots and, and so that's like the mickey mouse experience and the years you know how in you um, can in, tell in manga comics they always have um big eyed uh characters yeah. well they all get it from betty boop they copied betty boop oh and if you look that. at her okay. nose her nose is not pretty you well, know that looks like homer simpson's nose no but the, the, they they drop the nose too okay. in a lot of japanese manga and here we are bugs bunny yeah, these are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful designs. Yep. And of course, um, I used to underline all the films I saw in those days, and of course I wrecked the book. Chilly Willie, he wasn't much chop. He was much chop. He was in... You reckon? Um, yes, he was in a beautiful Bugs Bunny uh, cartoon, where uh, Bugs uh, actually... Um, um, what's his name? No. <laughs> what was the guy's name? The actor, uh, who, uh, you know, who Humphrey Bogart. He was in there. I said, "Hey, buddy, can you spare a dime?" And Chilly Willie. Yeah, because it was a, it was the same time that um, um, that film that Humphrey Bogart was in came out. The um, the gold. Well, Casablanca. No, the gold one. Oh, uh, the Treasure of Sierra Cooley's Madre. Gold. Yeah, Curly's Gold. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one. He was mad in that. Yeah. <laughs> Daffy Duck. So Daffy Duck had the uh, incredible ability to um, get into these absolute brilliant um, um, expression-led poses. And yeah. he was so animated, you know, no other character could match him, not even, no. not even Woody no. Woodpecker. He left, he left, um, and of course, he, early left Bugs, Don, he left Donald for dead. Yeah, well, early Bugs Bunny um, was very zany as well. Yeah. So, I don't yep. know whether you could, uh, but you know, Daffy Duck then. Now, Droopy. Now, I couldn't stand Droopy until, uh, what's his name got hold of him? Uh, Mac, uh, what's his, um, Tex Avery. Tex Avery, yeah. And then I liked him. Yeah. And Dinky Duck was daggy. No, Dinky Duck was not daggy. <laughs> Deputy Dog was another very cool cartoon. Yeah. Terry Toons. Yes, um, Terry Illustrated Toons. Deputy Dog. I used to like the way it was drawn. Yes, very beautiful. Yeah, but I just thought he was just a. I don't know. Well, this the, he was okay. The, Dinky Duck, uh, Terry Toons from nineteen forties. There were musicals. The action happened. Yeah, the there action happened around Dinky Duck. Yeah. He didn't actually. So do again, any you know, they were courting the idea of cute animals. And this is Dick Dead Eye from a Gilbert and Sullivan um, opera, which um, uh, was animated. Um, yeah, this is Roald Searles. Yeah, character that's designs. right, Ronald. So beautiful, beautiful stuff. I don't actually, I haven't actually seen that. I, I have. Um, um, Disney on Parade. You see the idea of the yeah. icon oh. of the of the cartoon character becoming symbol. More popular. Very early. More in, popular in than the, Jesus um, Christ. The most recognised. Well, this happened picture in the, this in, happened in the forties. So yeah, it became and 30s, an icon. And thirties, and that was actually the um, yeah the most 
popular picture of all time. Of no interest to me whatsoever. This guy, of however, course, of course, this yeah. guy, however, Goofy, oh, he gosh. was brilliant. He was brilliant. Mickey, I hated. All the world owes uh, me. Donald, little. I loved. Oh, but, yeah. And 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 um Boy, and Goofy. Oh, well, doesn't he I did like, like Pluto. Yeah, he was alright. He looked like he settled in the middle age there, didn't he? Yeah. But and, Donald and Duck Lord, he, had he was real a great, possibilities. He was a great character for incredible antics. Yes. So here's some of Disney's parade. Disney's on parade. You've got the Seven Dwarfs and um, um, the um, Jungle Book. King, what's his name from uh, Jungle Book? Baloo or something? Is it? Uh, no, he's, he's the other one. Yeah. King Louis. King Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always an elephant in the room. But he's not a white elephant. Oh, okay. Flip the Frog. Yeah, now, another um, Flip the frog Disney film. was done um, by... Um, musical? By Ub Iwerks. Yeah. When he left Disney. Yeah. And actually, the more people do research into early Disney, they'll find out that Ub Iwerks was the man behind Disney. Yeah. Now, look at this. Ah. Robert McKimson's Falcon yeah. Leghorn. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, I, say, I say the boy don't pay attention. Pa mm. Pay attention, boy. Now, I don't know who Fufu is. Uh, this is Howlers and Bachelor, the guys that did um, um, uh, Animal Farm. Yes. Yep. Produced 33 films for television featuring Fufu. So he's just a. Uh, yeah, they're tramp. just very simple um, gags. No, very simply he designed. Doesn't stick out in my, um, in my landscape. Yeah. Now, Felix, he's big. Felix, an, an annual book cover, and you can see yes. they didn't bother to actually um, feel get anybody attached to the comic or the uh, animated shorts to design. Yeah. Felix, Felix was the cover. most popular superstar, the first superstar in animation, and even had a, a foxtrot yeah. named after him. And there was a song which went around the world, um, and uh, there it is there. Kept on walking, yeah. yeah. He kept on walking, and also he was. Um, he used to do these. He was loops. done by an Australian called Pat Sullivan, but the Americans pinched it office. And they pinched your office. Yeah, they pinched me office, all right. And we're going to get him back because he wasn't done by um, Otto Mesmer. He was done by Pat Sullivan. Mm. See, here's the thing with Felix. Felix yes. was very unusual because Felix would often break the fourth wall all of war time. So you can see music notes coming out, yes. right? So you read music. So he uses, he uses that as a ladder. And then when he gets up here, <coughs> he's, he's picking up things. He he belts. Use it as a golf club. Yes. Then he goes down, he pinches his um, saxophone, saxophone, plays music. Yep. <laughs> it's a coal cellar. Uses it as coal. Yeah. He had warm reception. Yeah. Yeah. So this was typical of both yeah. the comics and the animated yes. versions. Yes, yes. Because the animation Felix. was, well, it was, it was silent. Mm. So you had to make Something the gags. Something that was kind of lost in the 1960s yes. when they did the animated yeah. uh, series. Yeah. Okay, so one of my favourites is the Flintstones because it's like a take on the Yabba -dabba -doo. on the honeymooners. Yep. And many of the gags and the storylines were um, used in very novel ways by uh, the Flintstones. The this guy Barney was was voiced by Mel Blanc. Mel Blanc. I always felt that was sort of I don't know. I thought he could do it all. Oh well. Well, he you had to have. This was more of a sitcom, yeah. so you had you, it was different to the Warner Brothers yeah. thing. So you couldn't have him yeah. do all of the voices, unfortunately. He and did a quite a lot of voices. He did a lot of animals. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, all those all those side this, gags. Yeah, this is from the Flintstone film. Yep. Um, the Man Called Flintstone, which is a beautiful, a send -up beautiful of film. Spies. Yeah. You well, know? at the time, in the early 60s, there was James Bond. Yeah. On TV, there was... Our Man Get Flint. Smart. Well, that, that Man was from cinema. Uncle. This is what that this was, is. Man from Uncle was yeah. on TV. Um, and, of course, um, Get Smart. Yeah. So, it was part of that era. And we'd have the Fritz, which is the now, first X-rated... Fritz, 1970, what's 1971. Sex and Violence. Didn't really hit here till 1974. I no, think. but that was the first X-rated cartoon. Yeah, I wasn't able to see it because I was too young. Couldn't right. get in. Oh. But I would have loved to have seen it because of the novelty. The novel idea, I had no idea who well, Crumb was. Well, I can't so, stand Fritz the Cat. I loved, well, I loved um, the, the character and I loved. I just didn't like what they did to him because I'm a, I'm a Crumb fan, you know. Mm. Gerald McBoinboin, now that won an Academy Award, didn't it? Yes, Gerald Mc, the, the Gerald McBoinboin did. Yeah. Who makes that noise? Now, Goofy Gophers. So this is real 1950s. Goofy yeah. Gophers from Warner Brothers. 
Yeah. Yeah. George and Junior, don't remember that. They're the bearers from Warner Brothers. Mm, Aren't no, they? MGM, no, Tex Avery bearers. Oh, different. Tex oh, okay. Avery, yeah. So, yeah, that's the confusion. Yeah. See, Tex Avery did bearers. Warner Brothers well, they all did, did bears. bears. Yeah. And there's the first one of all, Gertie the Dinosaur, Winsor yeah. McKay. Which was a stage show that Winsor yeah. McKay would actually throw a ball or something and yeah, Gertie would catch stage, it on the and, yeah, they had the, yeah, and this is Hoppity Goes to Town. This is a town. feature, Hoppity Goes to Town, yeah. which is a beautiful feature if you get a chance to see it. I believe it's public domain, so you'll yes. be able to catch and, it and on YouTube. There, I like the music in it too, the songs yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And here they are, these guys are just up to no good. This is Heckle and Jekyll. This oh, here my favourite uh, cartoon as a kid growing up. Um, they, they were very cynical and slightly nasty. A bit like you, you reckon? <laughs> no, they had a lot of energy, um, but they, they also had cynicism. Well, but they were two con men. They were human. both yeah. con men. There was no straight man. No, they and, were con men. And yeah. Yeah. Dark Horse Deluxe. Yeah. So, they I mean, Colin Jekyll. That, that's some gag. Oh, that's a great picture. Look at yeah. the side. Look at the side. The side. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So, Heckle and Jekyll, lots of energy. And, uh, okay, and Homer Pigeon. Never saw him. No. Hippity Hopper is the kangaroo from Warner Brothers. Yeah, doing, 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 doing. Beautiful foil yes. for Sylvester. Yeah. Because the idea of, of a kangaroo, it had mouse-like features, so yes. the mouse would would go into the mouse hole or into yeah. the room. Yes. Sylvester would go in there after him. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's right. But the son, the son would say, my dad could do anything. He could lick anybody. Yeah. And of course, he was always getting bashed up by the kangaroo. Yeah. And of course, the son never saw the kangaroo. He just saw the little mouse. Yeah. And he was ashamed. Don't know this one. Looks European. This is Terry Toons. Looks... No, 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 no. It looks European. This is Terry Toons. Sydney. 6'6 six, six Sydney. Um, oh, was yeah. a character by um, Terry Toons. It was a beautiful uh, series of cartoons. 50s? Uh, no, early 60s. Okay. 62, okay. Yeah. Okay. There's always another elephant in the room. Yeah. Now, I remember him. Inky and the Minor Birds. So to... Inky was the little cave yeah, kid. What was the music in that? Because um, he would always be walking and you'd jump. Da, 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 he, da, da, that's it. Da, da, that's da, da, it. Da. That's it. Which is Mendelssohn's Hebrides. I that's think. right. Correct. Yeah. So if you get a chance to watch this, you should. Yeah. The animation is the animation. What's good about Inky and the Minor Bird is not Inky, and it's not the Minor Bird. It's, it's the... Inky's pet dinosaur. It's fantastic. Ah, okay. Because he would he would trump on following these three. Because this guy had a little tick. He had like he he would walk and, and then jump. he would hop. Yeah, he had like hiccups, and uh, of course dun, 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 you know dun, dun, dun. Inky would uh, mimic that. Yeah, and then um, the dinosaur being a beautiful because brontosaurus. He's, he's a little he's a, a little, patosaurus yeah. for those of you who are oh, following. Oh, oh, you've kept up with the latest, have you? <laughs> I prefer brontosaurus. Yeah. Now Inspector Willoughby looks like we'll pass over him very quickly. I don't know anything about him. But you can see already it's a 1950s design. And 60, what, six, seven, oh. Yeah, so look at that red-eyed ruby, 1961. Yeah, yeah. So okay. 1950s design. This was, this was incredible rage uh, in well, they, cartoons. Well, all they did was move this, if I remember. The mouth Well, kids' moved. books, greeting cards, yeah, yeah. Um, games. Yeah. This style would be everywhere, 1950s style. Um, and Mary Blair, of course, from yep. uh, Disney, who did, designed... Um, oh, the Cats and Gemma Kids. Um, what did Mary Blair design? The um... she, she wasn't um, Preston's... Um, no. Different Blairs. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Mary I... Blair designed um, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. So this is the Cats and Gemma Kids, which yes. is based on a cartoon strip. Yes. One of the great strips of all time. Uh-huh. Uh, the original one, um, Max and Moritz, mm. very funny, very brilliant. It was first animated in 1917 by Randolph Hearst International, ah, which not, is not unusual. Not. And it was done by Walter Lance, so yeah. it probably looked like these two guys here. Which yeah. Which not very much like these. Yeah, which is different here again. Yeah. And then Crazy Cat, one of the great, great, great cartoons of all time although yeah they're crazy I didn't, cat it's... i didn't particularly like the animation series but it's it's got to be one of the most influential well strips of all time has yeah to be, has to be i, I think and so as a matter of fact hearst loved it that much that he traveled around so many times uh, all over the country 
And when he, he wanted to read Crazy Cat every day, they got hundreds of complaints about Crazy Cat. Take this strip off, no one understands it, it's nuts. No one likes it. It's he a different it. level of read. And when he would go to another cunt, uh, another state He insisted on it being in the paper. That's right, and he sacked people because it wasn't put in. Yeah. And yet, it's it's just one of the... I mean, the, the Surrealists loved it. Yeah. The Europeans loved it. I think that's why he liked it. And this is out of the, the Inkwell series, Coco the Clown. He's always yeah. coming out of the Inkwell and going back. Yeah, very creepy kind of clown. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look at this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Without the hat, that's what's under the hat. Do you think this is where, pubic hair. where it came from? Uh, it came... It probably came from the McDonald's clown. Yeah. Well... There's Little, Little Nemo. Nemo in Slumberland. Yes. Little Lulu, right? These are beautiful little uh, characters. Well, she's created by Max Fletcher. She put her mum's uh, based lipstick. Based on the. Um, she put her mum's lipstick into her um, a pencil sharpener. This is created by uh, a lady, by a girl uh, called Marjorie Buell. Yeah. And beautiful. Look at the use of symbols here. You know, very very simple shapes. You, you see, some of these characters were, were, were big in comics, but they only made a, a you know, a, like Little Audrey wasn't in many cartoons. No, and that's um, yeah. Paramount's famous studios. Yeah. Loopy de Loop, of course, is a Hanna Barbera staple. Loopy yeah. de Loop was brilliantly done. Really. A tale of Loopy de Loop. He's actually a wolf down on his is luck. He, is he Trying Canadian? To... Canadian? No, but he's. Tr- it looks like well, Loop Canadian, Loop. you know. Uh, yeah, Lupe. Um, no, he's basically trying to... He's a wolf, right? And he's everyone's down on scared his luck. Well, everyone's scared of him and they think he's a bum because he's a wolf. Must so, be pretty tough, you know. Yeah. Lucky Luke. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, Canadian. Because yeah, he has the, um, the woolly hat. Lucky Luke, which I, I must admit I've never seen. Well, he was sort of like... Um, I know the song. What was the Disney character? Um, Yosemite Sam? No, no. 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 Lucky it? Luke was a cool guy with no, a smoking cigarette. No, no, no. Cigarette. Disney had a character who had the same thing and it could do a Pecos Bill. Oh, I He could do all that. this and I think, I don't know who came first, Pecos Bill. I think Pecos Bill came first. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, European it. But Lucky Luke is based on the French comic. Yeah, yeah. And this is... Um, Little Rocket, of course, is the... Yeah, Terry uh, Toons. Terry Toons, Paul, one of Paul Terry's staples. Yeah. Um, more so... I guess Little Rockford, the the gags of Little Rockford were a lot of it was replaced when they when yeah, Tom Mighty and Jerry. Mouse yeah, Tom and became Jerry. more yeah well, well I mean yeah Tom and Jerry there is Mighty Mouse here yep yeah here I come to save the day Mutt and Jeff well very early strip and they all got turned into cartoons of course never saw that now Mr Magoo is a very interesting oh character. my god um, <laughs> He, he was uh, yeah, produced by uh, UPA, of course. UPA yes. were created by the artists that went on strike at Disney and formed their own uh, their own studio. And basically, he was just a guy who was who was short sighted and crashed into everything. And all the, all the whole stories were uh, yeah. well. UPA was the studio that brought out uh, the uh, Academy Award winning um, Gerald McBoing. Oh yes, yes. Um, but... They used that as a as a uh, as a way of producing these shorts yeah and i don't jim, know how they actually did with these but and, um, and jim backers did the voice who was the father of um gilligan no no he, he, he was Island. he was in gilligan's Island, but he yeah. was the father of um uh what's the film red without a cause he was the father of without a cause mm. and this is uh, the feature yeah um mr magoo and uh, what is it the arabian nights yeah. hundred and a thousand one arabian nights yeah, you can see again they're breaking the fourth, not breaking the fourth wall. They're um, destroying perspective, which was uh, the the basic yeah. premise for um, UPA. 1950s. Well, UPA yeah, yeah. 1950s uh, cartoons of that style. Yeah. Uh, Disney, of course, adopted it with shorts like. Um, Dis- Disney um, was forced into it. <laughs> Didn't want to no, do they. It. I don't know if they're forced into it. But they realised that this was something different and something they could benefit from, so they used it in a, in a few shorts themselves. Musette? Um, yeah, Musette, I never really knew a, much about. Gay Paris but Milo is, is, a, is a feature with... Um, uh, oh, I'm just trying to think. Um, um, I think voiced by Judy Garland. And Maurice Chevalier. Yeah. People like that. Yeah, I don't know very much. Yeah, Judy Garland. Yeah. Um, and this is... Um, Chuck Jones, of course, is the, the, is the artist who booth. designed him. Phantom Tollbooth. I've never seen it. It's a very, very famous film. It's in all the books of history. So I don't know. What's his little... Yeah. I love this guy. 
So here I come, to, and I love the way that was done. The the red, yeah, it was streak, just beautiful. Yeah. He always, Mighty Mouse, Mighty Mouse, here I come to save well, the day. Well, Mighty Mouse was an answer to the superhero yes. popularity of Max Flesher's yeah. Superman. And here so they, they are, created, there's the whole um, uh, mob. Uh, th this was the Terry, some of some, yeah. some, not all of some of them. There's because baby, he was missing. He was always fighting. Um, who the was the bad goose? guy? Uh, tin, tin Can Harry. Yeah, Tin the Can cat. Harry. Yeah. Nya, uh, uh. Yeah. Well, uh, he's always tying, he's always tying women to the railway tracks and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But the music was, musicals the music in there, was they would good. Sing. I like the musics. Yeah, they would Very be singing. Much. Yeah. Very much singing and carrying on. Oswald. Oswald the Rabbit, of course, the Disney uh, character, and Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. Which, of course, is, uh, uh, is who, a... Who is now definitely on the nose. <laughs> well, yeah, but he... he, he I mean, he, he, he's a... Um, he's a um, Chuck Jones uh, character, created mm. character. So, you know... Darlene. Beautiful, subtle designs and The Pink Panther, which started out as just credits. Yeah. Became yeah. a whole character. Yeah, this is the you, bottom, the bottom, reason why Fritz Freeling bottom, became such an important bottom, studio bottom, bottom, in animation. Bottom, bottom, bottom. Um, Here he is. Look at this picture. Uh, Isn't Popeye, that wonderful? Uh, uh, Re 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 if, if you've got a chance, uh, go past the 1960s um, into the 1930s and 40s and watch some of the black and white uh, Popeye cartoons because they were a joy. They're oh. absolutely fantastic. So games at the moment it, it, it reflected very much as a style in Cuphead. Oh, Popeye! Um, which is a very big series. And uh, he was big, big on hamburgers. Big on hamburgers. A lot of things. A lot of things, actually. The Wimpy. characters were beautifully matched yeah. to fit. Um, the, the different character personalities were very much um, fit like fingers of a glove. So I, any, any particular finger missing and yeah. you... It would jar. Early, so, early, um, early Popeye before it became animated was pretty strange stuff. Really exotic sort of stories. And stuff. You have to see it to believe it. Yeah, but, but, but it's, with Popeye, it's tongue in cheek. Popeye, even the names of the thing. I think Popeye was the best stuff that the Flyers ever did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Look at that beautiful, beautiful drawing. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh. So if you wanted and, something in between... And, and what's that joke? He's always cracking joke. And what's that joke, joke you, you just cracked about, I can read what? Pop, pop, I said, what, what did Popeye say? Um, what did Popeye say? I can read reading, but I can't read writing. That's it. That's right. And he was full of those jokes. And he was yeah. always mumbling under his... Cracking jokes always underneath under his, his breath. breath. Yeah. And you've got to really listen. Yes. Porky Pig. Yes. Beautiful. Yep. The porky pig is baby size proportions, baby yes. size, baby yes. head. Yeah. So cute, you're looking at something cute. Yeah. The reason why they did this very simple shape was so that they get these extremes. So it was like a shock value. Yeah. Um, They're able to squash and stretch him beautifully like yeah. they would a ball or an egg yeah. easily. More porky pig. Yeah. Now, this uh, particular show oh, here. Bob Godfrey, British, very funny. Uh, Scaredy Cat, Scaredy yeah. Cat, Sylvester and Porky. You must see this. You must watch this Univac. short. Yeah, that's um, Dragnet. Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Tuesday, Sergeant Wednesday, Sergeant Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Well, Daffy did a few um, detective um, stories. Yeah. Um, Rocket Squad was in 1955. That's uh, designed yeah. by, um, obviously, by Chuck Jones. Now, Rhubarb, I'm not sure about. That Rob, was based on a Bob strip. Godfrey did a lot of stuff, um, animation series in England for many years, but he was really influenced by... Um, Custard the Cat. No, he was really influenced by by um, Crumb and took him a long time to shake off Crumb a long time this guy yeah Bob Godfrey he's very popular in England never would have known okay and here we are Mimi Roadrunner beautiful uh, Mimi yeah fantastic Looks like so Robert else. McKimson really came into his own with uh, with these characters you reckon yeah beautiful I thought it was um, Chuck no Robert McKimson was the uh, these are Chuck the Jones characters they are but, uh, oh well, I don't, I don't know much about Rob McKinson at all, so. Okay. Ooh, isn't that sad? Yeah, that's a Chuck Jones. So that's Sam, the, the sheepdog. Uh, shape, um, you never saw his expressions. eyes. You never saw no, his eyes. No, that was the idea of, the, of that type of uh, yeah. dog. Look, he's got his pipe. Yeah. 
He's definitely got the character down. Chuck Jones used complicated shapes, more complicated shapes than, than Warner Brothers used before. So he were actually was responsible for these beautiful uh, designs of the characters. They, they started out life as being very sort of roundish mm. by McKimson and other animators, and then they became very much more interested. Look at this gag. And because they had a variety of made, shapes... Made a whole gag just about these... these yeah, the well, that's, the, that's more of the McKimson style. Yeah. But because they had these variety of shapes, they were able to really express themselves in more geometric fashion. Very much more exciting. Squirry squirrel. So variety of of, uh, uh, of shapes they used to draw the character, and uh, indeed to animate the character. So a lot of variety was used. That's what I'm saying too. Speeding he had, a good, he had a, a good feel for character design and expression. Yeah. This is uh, Chuck Jones, and also um, um, proportions. I reckon it's um, so, Mel Blanc. I reckon it's Mel Blanc. Possibly. That's Mel Blanc. Well, all animators look in mirrors and yeah. Refer Sylvester to and his son. Yeah, Sylvester. His precocious son. Yeah. Uh, we never we, we never bumped into um, the mother, did we? Mm. Sylvester and Tweety Pie. Yeah. I taught I tore a putty tat. Yeah, unusually, Tweety's voiced by uh, Mel Blanc as well. Yeah. Which Spike is a testament to tyke. his brilliance. Yeah, it's Spikes, don't know obviously. Any about those terry bears were um, from um, uh, Terry Tunes, Paul Terry's. Uh, yeah, Paul Terry's. That's the right. Two little mischievous bears. Yeah. So right out of nursery rhymes. Yeah, stuff too cute for me. Look. Too cute for me. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of the yeah. cartoons back in the 30s and 40s were based on nursery rhyme books. Tom and Jerry. This is this is see. This is what I was getting at about... Um, this is later. This is, yeah. not, this is not Hannah No, Barbera. this is after the Phantom Tollbooth. Yeah. This is... This is um, um, uh, what's his name? We were just speaking about Oh, I'll him. never forget what's his name. Yeah, him. So um, you can see that it started to have these sort of yeah, little yeah, eyelash things yeah. and things. And, this was done in Europe, wasn't it? And um, Chuck Jones started to, to create yeah. these very sort of tropish yeah, looking expressions all, yeah. that's what i saw and and even this yeah so that's, that's what very, i hated yeah Me, I to do this to tom and jerry yes how, how could they how dare you how so right. tom and jerry started out life as a very 30s yeah. Yeah. very roundish forms you could see these very roundish forms uh this is the um won't look at those they're the chuck jones ones and who um, the middle period who um what What's that cartoon series that um, Bart likes to watch? It? Itchy and Scratchy. That's right. Well, that's yeah. That's where it came from. Yeah. Itchy and Scratchy. Yeah. So you can see they had a lot of implied violence, yep. a lot and of aggression violence. and stuff in the yep. thing. This is the 1930s. Oh, look at this. This is the 1960s. The placement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Woody Woodpecker, who yeah. I couldn't stand. Couldn't stand him. Couldn't stand him. Never seen many of his shows. Um, yeah, yeah. I used to watch occasionally the cartoon show. It drove uh, me nuts. They had a lot of other characters. And it takes what off what was interesting with Paul Terry because he was an independent studio outside of the studio system of Disney and all of the other well, Flesher Studios, etc. Wasn't he one of the first studios? Uh, he lasted long. Possibly, yeah. yeah. But he, he, as an independent, he was able to sort of watch and sort yeah. of comment on the other yeah, characters. That's right. So a lot of the things, I think he was one of the first uh, animators to use the cloud of conflict where you'd have this sort of cloud of take, people smashing. Take a powder. Yeah. So they have a lot of uh, cloud of um, action and, yes, and yes, punching and yes, stuff, yes. and the character would step out. Yeah, or something would and, reach and, out and of rock, the cloud for a hammer and have a cigarette. I have a, yeah. you know, and then get pulled back in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I couldn't stand him. Oh. Well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, he was and, iconic and in, in, his in, in his time. Oh, this is when he actually lost it, when they started to dilute the... Well, they go for the, the kids. Um, they always go for kids, yeah. don't they? They, they? they turn them into kids again. Yeah. Oh, Yellow Submarine. What did you think of Yellow Submarine? Um, creepy. Very creepy. Very the animation is very stinted. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was designed by, uh, is it Peter Max? Uh, not Peter Max. Oh, there's um, a lot of people. It was a Swedish, a Swiss guy who did it. Was it? Uh, yeah. Well, the designer, I think, was a guy called Max. 
What, it did all the posters? It did all the posters, those. Yeah, the, well, it's just the whole look of it, I think. The blue meanies. Mm, maybe you're right, there's probably a lot of people. Look at that hand. But this was a very, uh, very acid well, this is, time. It, this is felt. very Max, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, different Max. Ah. Not Peter Max, the, the French or the French guy. The, um, There's your guy. chance. This is uh, Yogi. Now, uh, Yogi, Yogi Bear, Bear uh -huh. is a very, very cool character because um, he's sort of a, like a, a Zen um, teacher in a way because he had a very simple... Um, a Zen teacher. Yeah, he had a very simple... This is a stretch, folks. Yeah. No, he is. He's a yogi. Yogi means teacher. Ah, oh, Yogi oh, Bear is my course. teacher. Oh, of so the idea, well, he would say things like, um, when you get an idea, never blink. Because when you blink, you put a kink in your think. <laughs> so, um, that's one, one Something of his Something tells me he's ripped off so, by a radio character. Yeah, yeah. well, Something he's based on me. Yogi, uh, the yogi Bearer. Basket, boo -boo. Uh -huh. He's based on Yogi Berra, who was a oh. character back then. And there he is. And there's... So oh. this is the lineup of the Huckleberry Hound show. Yes. Um, Boo Boo is uh, Yogi's offsider. Then you've got Mr. Jinx and Pixie and Dixie. I hate you pieces um, and pieces to pieces. The, the beauty about Yogi Bear is that he had a very simple story idea. He either wanted picnic baskets. Yep. So he wanted to, food, to feed himself or he wanted to escape. So he either wanted food or freedom. It's the only well, thing he ever wanted. Stuff, isn't it? He didn't want anything else. The other guys, like you know, um, Mr. Jinx was always up to up to no good. You know, trying to get the Mises or scam, like you know, to scam the system. Yep. Um, uh, Huckleberry Hound was sort of trying out different jobs as a dog catcher, yep. which is kind of funny because he's a dog. Um, but Yogi Bear always wanted two things. Um, at different times, either freedom or food. Which or cross, is very simple. Or cross dressing. And that's not all, folks. So we have all the, these are studios, these are other companies. D. Patty Freeling, you should definitely check out some of that. There's yeah. some brilliant stuff from, uh, from them. Uh, we didn't talk very much about the um, Casper. Well, I thought Casper's pretty daggy. I like Baby Huey, that's about the only one I liked. Yeah. So they are, they are, um, um, There's some great directors there. Look, Seymour, yeah. Bill Deitler, um, Ralph, Ralph, yeah, Shane Ralph Calhoun. Yeah. Calhoun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was put out by, um, when Flesher Studios ceased to function, famous yeah. studios released uh, through Paramount, they created a new studio, which and, is Harvey Studios. And what do you think of this guy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, I like uh, these we, characters, <laughs> Hallis and Bachelor. And what do you think of this guy? If you get a chance to see uh, the brilliant um, uh, film that they did, uh, The Partridge Family, no, 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 don't watch that. <laughs> if you get, go and see the brilliant film that they did of um, Animal Farm, yeah. that's, that's worth the, mo the ticket money. And do uh, you like this guy? Um, Moving on, yes, okay. Um, Abbey Works, yes, check Abbey. him out. Very important, very important. Yeah. Um, he's behind... You know Scooby? He's behind so sound. many things in cinema, and actually, he did the soundtrack yeah. to Hitchcock's Birds. Oh, that wow. was the last thing he did. Fantastic. He was quite a guy. Disney Gaston couldn't have done Le Disney. Creon. Yes. Terry Turns. So there's a UPA. lot of influence of um, and different things. Scooby Doo was. Uh, did you name any of your children after um, characters in that? No. I always thought you were going to. And that's the index, and that's the back of the book. Wow, the end. Yeah. All right. End. We so finally got let's there. Have a look. That's the great movie cartoon parade, yes. which was an effort to get through it. Yes. House and Rider is a great uh, book. You know, it's just little tidbits of um, of gossip and yeah. stuff. And um, it's obviously out of print, but it's a yeah. great thing to. Um, you can probably get one of beauty on um, Amazon. Yeah, but it's very badly designed and it's falling to bits. Yeah. And look, you know, you can get these on Amazon. I know that. And look, 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 folks. He's practical. Yeah. He's practical. Except he can't put Not a Not so practical. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh. Okay, okay. this is Franz Cantor. And um, Jim and, Bridges and that's, saying, that's don't Franz forget. Cantor, and that's Jim Bridges. And this is the ACM Toon Talk Show. And uh, thanks for watching. And please remember to subscribe. 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 Yes. We'll catch you next time. The subtext of this show is to subscribe. Bye bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.